Hello world, I am back with another episode of Three Candid Questions. Yes, and I had a lot of fun with this episode. I would say it's one of the episodes where the storytelling was really big and really, really awesome. So you will enjoy that, I'm sure. And the three key words in this episode, I would say, are energy. Take a lot of energy away from this. Second is disruption and the power of disruption. And the third one is alignment and the power of alignment. So enjoy my interview with Maxwell Me. And if you have any thoughts, any questions, any comments on this or other episodes, please feel free to reach out as always, start a conversation. If you would like to support us, please leave a listener's tip or a viewer's tip. We will be super grateful and speak soon. Hi, Max. How are you? Hey, Sabrina. I'm good. <laughs> awesome that you finally made time for this interview. Thank you so much. Well, let me just let me just give full context on that. I always made time, but we finally <laughs> booked it in, right? So, yes, true. Yeah, no, I haven't been putting this away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is it hot where you are at the moment? It looks like it's super hot. It's super hot. You'll probably see me just wiping my head uh, every now and then because I'm in Barcelona and um, it's like peak of summer. It's beautiful. You know, there hasn't been any clouds in the sky for like two weeks, but it's like, yeah, it's like hot Spanish summer, as you can imagine. Awesome. I should come over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, we are here to talk about you today and hear a little about your life story and what you have been up to. And hopefully we can inspire some people to go for their dreams as well. Cool. I'm all for that. Yay. Um, so just talk a bit about who Maxwell Me is and what he has been doing in the last couple of years. Yeah, well, that's that that question is who Maxwell Me is, is probably a question in itself. So I have been on a rapid journey of um, like self-discovery. And so who I am it's probably been changing, you know, it's mm -hmm. been changing, uh, not, not black and white, but it's been, it's been evolving. You know, um, I went into, where do I start? Um, okay. So I'll start in school. So in school, I didn't like school, you know, I didn't like mm -hmm. school. I didn't like the, the, the conformity of, you know, do this assignment, even though, it has no real world application and just do it. And you're going to be your, your value, your grade, your, your achievement, your success in life will be determined by this, by this one assignment, um, about, you know, pollution that has no real world application for me because pollution isn't something I'm passionate about. So I just never understood that. And that, you know, obviously was a big blocker for me mm -hmm. to, you know, appreciate and respect uh being in the classroom and <laughs> and that sort of thing but I you know I tried to do what I could what I could do but um I was always quite envious you know I was always quite envious of people who were like happy who enjoyed studying and they were in school because that was like you know if you enjoyed studying and you enjoyed uh you enjoyed living in that idea mm. then you are like you're like Roger Federer playing tennis you know you're in you're in your thing right so I was yeah. I, I wasn't in my thing until um until I just quit my my first you know um proper job out of a lot of frustration and and like pain and and unhappiness mm. and when was that in your life it sounds to me that there were several years that you went through where you weren't really doing your thing or something yeah. else in alignment yeah yeah so starting from the beginning you know I was in school not not enjoying it mm. I was in university not enjoying it um went into the first few jobs and I was yeah enjoying it at the beginning but then it started to feel the same again mm. even even though I was I was changing jobs and getting like promotions like every every like 18 months it that that same pattern um like it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't enough, like you really sort of like deep down. Mm. And um, so I left my first job when I think I was 24. So I just walked into work one day and then in like one view, 
I saw my boss and his boss and his boss like sitting on the standing desk sort of next to each other in like this really slick um, Australian office space because mm-hmm. uh, I worked in a, in a bank and I thought, wow, they look so unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> All of them. And, then, and then I thought, holy shit, you know, like this is, this view right here is the next 25 years of my life if I don't do anything. You know, I'm literally looking at, I'm literally looking at the, you know, if I could see into the future, I'm looking at the future. And then I realized, okay, well, you know, what the hell am I doing here? Mm. And then it hit me. It was like, well, you know, I have always wanted to be an entrepreneur, you know, and I haven't wanted to be an entrepreneur because I just like, you know, um, like there's a lot of reasons why I like being an entrepreneur, but it, but it's not it's not you know to make money or to make more money or like to work less. Like I'm not motivated by working less or anything like that. But mm-hmm. it was like uh, just like freedom, you know, like an entrepreneur mm-hmm. just makes up their own rules and 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 does whatever, and then and they find a way to get paid for it, right? So then they have like financial freedom. Yeah. So I realized that. Um, uh, I wasn't going for what I really wanted. And then, and then it really hit me. I was like, wow, I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. I didn't realize I've been afraid, you know, and I didn't realize that this, the last five years that I worked so hard on was actually like a plan B. And it was like, well, why the hell am I working on plan B? You know, I built like, I built like the Roman empire of like a plan B, you know, like I, <laughs> I, 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 I could. That's such a frustrating moment of yeah. revelation. Yeah, yeah, like this, like this plan B, like I, I had like the most impressive resume that you could have, you know, for someone that's 24 and like mm. was highly paid and that sort of thing, like this real Roman empire of a plan B. I was like, Max, you're an idiot. Like, what are you doing? And then, um, so then I quit, you know, I quit. Um, I didn't quit on the spot because mm-hmm. I was like, um, I, what did I do? I basically switched my brain off at work. Um, like so and- many people do yeah 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 and then I was like planning like an exit mm-hmm. um and in planning my exits I booked a ticket a one-way ticket to go to Canada because I thought to myself why um I said okay well I need to grow right I haven't been doing what I really wanted to do so I got growing I, got, I have to catch up on the growing that I haven't been doing mm-hmm. so I thought to myself how do I do that well what I can do is I can um I can, I basically want to make myself as uncomfortable as possible. Mm -hmm. So I deliberately chose to move to Canada, um, a place where I've got no friends, never been there before, never seen snow before. I moved to like one of the coldest parts of Canada um, and uh, no place to stay, no job, nothing, just move. Mm -hmm. Just move and work it out. And, And that was awesome. And like I was there, you know, my salary went from like, from like, you know, like six figures down to literally zero had, had, had probably like two months worth of savings if that, and that was, you know, being frugal. Um, but I was so happy, you know, I was so happy, like, just like no commitment to anything, no responsibility to anything and just, just doing nothing really. I have one question, like all that, realization and all that thought that went into totally disrupting your life to make that change possible and go for plan a not b anymore did you have any support in that or was that all your own focus reflection thinking yeah so um you know when i get fixed on an idea Mm -hmm. you know it's 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 probably not possible to, to talk me out of it. So mm-hmm. like I, I, yeah, made the decision on my own. Um, mm-hmm. I, in fact, I got negative feedback from everyone. Like, yes, you can imagine, you know, my parents, my dad, my mom, um, you know, my sister was a bit like, yeah, do what you want. My brother was a bit like, are you sure? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there was a lot of, are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you just bought, you just bought a property which I had to sell, um, you just did this and, you know, you just, your, your boss, your manager just um, sent you to, to Sydney for an executive conference and like all, all this, all this like um, job sugar, you know, like yeah, that, yeah. All, this, all, the, all the perks. Um, 
and you just got your bonus and blah blah blah. blah. Oh, that that was that was that was the reason why. So the reason why I didn't quit straight away is because I was like four months away from bonus time. So I I prepped <laughs> I prepped my exit like I I couldn't I honestly couldn't take one more second. You know, like so it was that painful, and you know that that that's on me. That's uh, that I got to that point. Um, but you know pain has a purpose and it's, and it's to drive you into action. So, um, I, it was like, as soon as, as soon as the bonus hit my bank account, <laughs> I handed in my resignation. <laughs> you are that ready. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but that, but that wasn't uncommon, you know, like, because, uh, in banking bonus happens like clockwork, like specific day a yeah. year. So it happened in like the second week of September, and um you know the whole month of october for any bank is just hiring just hiring and hiring and hiring because everyone everyone is uh just you know treading water and then and then they jump right and sometimes they jump to other banks they, they don't always quit their jobs you know like they or they go to a different industry or whatever and uh and it makes sense you know like i know people that were managers that were say yeah i'm gonna do it it's my turn yeah <laughs> it's my, my turn to press the button um yeah, so then I moved to Canada and um yeah, I was just just wandering around every day. Um I tried another job. <clears throat> you know, I thought to myself, okay, so banking didn't work. It was really painful putting on like a tie, you know, a tie, mm -hmm. jacket, like, oh God, let's do my hair, to shave. And I um so I said okay well well maybe what I'm missing is like you know a fun environment it's dynamic young people because I was mm -hmm. always I was the, always the youngest person in the room and um uh so I because uh, I do like finance like I do like finance I do like economics so then I went I this is a funny story so this, I found a a guy who looked like a pretty cool entrepreneur I just saw it from his picture and he had a company where it was he was basically doing what what TransferWise does. So like mm -hmm. helping people to, to change from Canadian to US dollar across borders without having to go into a bank and and um and that sort of thing. So I thought, okay, well that's cool. That makes sense. Like there's a big market for that. And uh he was a one-man band, like you could tell, just for like from the website and stuff. So then I found out where he worked and um I you know, he worked in the in a co-working space and I sent him an email, which he didn't respond to. Uh, like, you know, you almost never get a response from the email, but that means nothing to me. <laughs> so then I, um, I, I go, I go to the front desk just in like, um, a t-shirt, like pants, like boots and my, my like leather bag, my laptop in it. And then I say to the woman, Hey, I'm here to meet, uh, John. Um, I think his name's John Holland. Uh, Jonathan Holland and um she's like oh, okay you know he's expecting you I said oh well you know I've, I've I've reached out to him um but I haven't you know I haven't heard back you know so I didn't lie but I, I you know I painted a a gray picture mm -hmm. and she's like okay cool well he's just in there so um here let me open the door and you can and you can, <laughs> you can you can go through and see if he's ready for you I said thank you so much so then I go through this door like the security door you're not meant to get through <clears throat> and then I see him working I tap him on the shoulder. I say, "Hey, Jonathan. Uh, my name is Max. I'm from Australia. I just landed, and um, I think what you're doing is really cool. I want I want to work for you." Mm -hmm. And and he says to me, "How the hell did you get in here?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Well, you know, I sort of I sort of uh, wriggled my way in, but mm -hmm. um, but that's what I do, <clears throat> right? I um, I find opportunities and things." And then he said, "I love that." you're hired, you know? And then, so then, so then I started working from this guy, like, you know, within one day, I, just, I literally walk in, have that, we have that conversation. I could tell that he was that type of guy as well. Like you just tell that he's one of those like young, big energy, mm. charismatic, you know, uh, extroverted, you know, type of entrepreneur. And I, and then, and then I just put my bag down beside him, like right next to him in the mm. seat, free seat next to him. Uh, sitting on this fake grass seat and start, start working. I said, so what are we doing? <laughs> cool. Uh, the, 
there's there's a lot of wisdom in that story because number one, find opportunities and wriggle your way in if you really want something. And <clears throat> check for opportunities that seem to be in line with who you are. Like you you said you could sense that he was sort of an, a young extroverted and yeah. entrepreneur type of guy. So there was probably a fit. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably a little bit of intuition. Um mm a little bit of intuition in that and that was the second the first place that was the second place I went to I went to another place that I couldn't quite find the entrance into like the main area for the co-working space so you know I didn't hit I didn't hit the goal yeah first run it was the second yeah. Yeah. and then um so then I'm okay so I think okay well I like finance mm -hmm. I like economics uh I like you know fast growth you know I like this guy he's really cool I've got a lot of respect for him and um I am uh, sitting next to him and I think, okay, well, this is it. Like, this will make me happy, right? Like, um, because instead of working in a bank, like, like, you know, shoes and tie and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. I'm here where it's like free food, bean bags, coffee, yeah. tea bags, like, like pods, like glass pods to talk, like just you know, like where, like Google, like what you imagine when Google looks yeah. like working, like I went from a bank to Google. So I thought, okay, well, this is cool. And then it started to feel the same. I was like, okay, well, now I'm starting to learn something, you know, like yeah. this, this, um, this building someone else's dream. That's, that isn't, you know, like I did, I do like that stuff, but it's not, if I had to paint my own picture, it wouldn't be that picture. Right. Um, but that's his picture. So it's a good for him. So then, so then I leave that. And then whilst I'm trying to work some stuff out, I'm like <clears throat> sleeping on couches. Um, I had like these Bluetooth Bose speakers. I sold them to help pay for rent. Uh, and I, you know, was like staying at my friend's house for like three weeks. And then I said, okay, well, let, let me just do something fun where I don't have to use my brain, but I just, I just get to, enjoy a different side of life <clears throat> so then i started working for um for lululemon uh which is like an active wear brand uh they aren't that big in europe but they're very big in um australia asia mm. or the uk and um and i started working there part-time whilst i just work some stuff out so i work in there part-time 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 and then i see a facebook ad so you know uh i've learned to believe that everything comes right when you need it mm -hmm. and I've seen this ad before you know um it's one of those ads like learn how to be an online um online marketing specialist it was an online marketing consultant and um and yeah you can earn you know whatever you can earn I thought okay well that looks good right now mm -hmm. and um and I was like well I've always had an interest in like in like that psychology of marketing you know like in because I because I enjoy like sales Marketing is just sales on paper, so to speak. You know, it just sales like in an email or in a, um, a page or a video or whatever. So, so then I uh, click this ad, go through this webinar. I'm like, oh yeah, if it works, it works. And then I I was really skeptical. You know, I was skeptical. I was I was scared. I was, mm -hmm. I was scared, but blaming on skepticism, right? So, so then they had like a a list of testimonials, uh, like 3,000 five-star testimonials. And then I started, um, and I had the names there, you know, names and short videos. So I started adding them on LinkedIn and messaging them and say, hey, are you real? <laughs> like, are you real? It has this program. Like, is this, is this real? Like, is this real? And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. I said, you know, are you earning the money that he claimed? He said, um, one of the guys, I think I didn't have a call with him. I was messaging him he said look the program works if you do the work he said I, I did learn from the program but I didn't my business isn't doesn't uh, didn't end up fitting the the box of the program and then I said okay well that's fair enough so you know program works if you do the work so then I buy this program and I didn't have the money so I had to borrow money from my brother so everyone that you know I've spoken to that wants to buy something but doesn't have the money like um, I don't hear that. I hear you just don't want it enough. 
because yeah, yeah, scale. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm. scale you don't want it enough and that's okay but mm. it's it's you know it's it's not about that and then then what happened next and i borrow the money i pay for the program and then like you should have seen like i like devoured this program because it was all on the line you know i didn't like borrowing money for my brother like no one likes that yeah. i didn't like um not that i didn't like but um you know it's either i create a client here or everything's or i have to go back to banking which yeah. is horrible um i like just like there was no there was no plan b anymore in my head it was just all plan a and then so i like worked on this program like 14 to 16 hours a day mm. yeah it's just like devouring it, like every second of every day and just like learning as quick as possible as possible and then in five weeks i get my first client and it's like wow this thing is real you know this whole world of like uh high fee clients and and working for yourself and like being a consultant being a coach being 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 whatever like people will actually pay you money for you know solving a problem for them mm. um so that was really cool and then the world opened up and then um uh one thing led to another and um I, like after meeting um my business partners like adrian and then ryan um mm -hmm. it then evolved into hpc which is high performing coach yeah yeah <clears throat> i have a question for you because when one listens to your story it sounds like you have a very very strong sense of determination and you don't really give up easily but i'm sure there were moments when you were like really doubting yourself or scared and wondering am i doing the right thing here so what do you do when that comes up how do you handle barriers maybe mental emotional barriers that pop yeah. up for you yeah that's a good question i've heard that a lot recently actually um let me think mm -hmm. you know i can't i can't say that i can remember the last time when um I shied away from something without at least trying it. Mm -hmm. Like, like, because what we're talking about is like, yeah, the, the determination to get something done. I can't remember when I shied away from it without at least trying it once. Usually I'll try it at least once yeah. and then and then that will educate me and then I'll be like, okay, well, this is harder than I thought. I don't want it anymore. Or um or I need I, this needs more from me that I'm not willing to put in right now. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I can't quite say I've ever said, oh, that's, that's not going to work. Um, like I, I believe everything can work. It just depends mm -hmm. on the, like, am I willing, am I willing to, to in, invest what I need to invest in myself in that thing right now? Yes or no. It's that it's like, am I, am I willing to? So it's like, I not it, is too hard it's like i am i is the i is the willpower and the i willing to be stronger than what it's going to take right now mm -hmm. uh, if it's a no then i don't do it but if it's a yes then you know i'll do it and probably burn out doing it mm -hmm. um so but but let me let me see if i can answer your question a little bit better <laughs> so there was a period when I had to rely on outside inspiration to be this this determined for things. Mm -hmm. So so when I was first working at the bank, a part of me was a bit like, yeah, I can't get a graduate job, you know, because I because I didn't because I don't like school. I didn't do well in school. I have stigmatism, uh, which means I see things like twice. So mm -hmm. I don't enjoy reading. Like I hate reading. Um, like I've only read like four books in my life. So. Um, so school wasn't easy for me. Mm. So, and because school wasn't easy for me, like I got through it. Um, and when I tried, like I did well, but I just just also didn't enjoy it. So it wasn't easy and I didn't enjoy it. So mm. you just imagine how painful that is. So then what happened was um, in university, 
um i i failed so many times that it took me like six years to finish a three-year degree and um <laughs> and in australia you have this thing called uh hex debt and you know your hex debt uh is something that the government pays for university degree mm -hmm. but yeah. then you pay them back when you're earning money when, when you earn above a certain threshold so that the hex debt for my degree it's plus inflation um you know just if you do it in one go it's like twenty four thousand, right so but by, by the time i finished i left australia it was literally double that it was fifty thousand mm. for the same degree because i'd failed so many units and when you fail past a certain date you pay for it anyway which makes sense right because universities already pull that investment into you so i'm still paying that off still paying off my my hex debt <laughs> and uh where was i getting with that so so because because so in Australia your the past grade point average is four you know seven is like high distinction right and it's like from one to seven uh my grade point average when I graduated was like 3.2 so I graduated with the with the, an average less than satisfactory of, <laughs> of 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 success in the degree um so then I thought okay I can't I can't um uh I can't get a graduate job like I'm I'm sort of I'm sort of trapped unless I change degrees you know I was looking at law I was looking at study again and trying to like revamp myself and do it again um and then I meet this guy I meet this guy who really really inspired me and helped me out and this guy um I worked with him at the bank and he was a mature age student so he sort of went through university did what I did he went through university, didn't really try, you know, grade point average was like 4.2. Uh, I did an exchange in, I think, the University of Sheffield in the UK, you know, basically drank, you know, the whole semester, right? And mm -hmm. uh, I had the time of his life, you know, he doesn't, doesn't regret it, but now he's like, hey, I have to do this again. So he went back and then he did law. And this guy, man, um, he's still one of the biggest influences in my life today. I don't talk to him much that more any, anymore, but, but I saw like, because he knew that he had a degree that had, that made him look bad, basically. Mm. He knew he had to put everything that he possibly had into this other degree. Otherwise law firms are very strict. It's like either you mm. tick these boxes or you're not even in the game. Mm. If you're not in the game, then you're not going to be a lawyer. Then what's the point of doing law, right? Mm. I love law. So then he, I saw him like, um, I was like, Shane, what are you doing? He came to work exhausted every day, like absolutely exhausted. Like he was, he was drinking cans of like Red Bull, like water. Like he was just living off sugar, you know, just, just, just pounding. yeah. And, and I, I live in Brisbane, right in the city and he went his university and he lived at the Gold Coast. So he lived like, he lived like a hundred like a one hour car ride, a hundred kilometers away, like something like close to hundred kilometers away from where he actually worked. Mm. But he worked here because it made it look good on his resume. And he went to university there because that's all he could get into. So he was driving like a hundred kilometers, like, and that's without traffic, right? Like <clears throat> just to make stuff work. And then, but all the jobs were in the city, right? So then he came to the city in Brisbane and um, I saw him just, taking people out for coffee and going to meetings and stuff and just all of these like hustling things. And I thought, Shane, what are you doing? And he said, um, oh, well, I, um, I, you know, in, in law, it's, it's not, it's, it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, I was like, yeah, I've heard that, but like, does it work? He said, he said, yeah. He said, you know, I've got a friend who, uh, you know, he's a genius. So he's graduated with the distinction, like seven out of seven um high distinction and uh but he said you know he wouldn't have gotten through the door if um if he didn't do all the extra stuff you know if he didn't if he didn't like take people out for coffee if he didn't host events and if 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 recruiters graduate recruiters didn't see him hosting events and things like that mm. and I thought ah oh, so that stuff does work you know and um and I can do that you know, like I can't, I can't go back in time and study harder. I don't, I'm not willing to do that, but I can do this. Mm. And then, so Shane didn't promise me anything, but he, he gave me an idea. And the idea was 
what if because my grades were so bad, like zero out of 10, that I turned up the hustle to 10 out of 10, mm. what, what could happen? Yeah, you know, yeah. what, what could happen? So then I turned up the hustle. Like I went out, I bought a suit, a $200 suit for everything, like jacket, shirt, tie, socks. <laughs> uh, usually, you know, you could pay, you could pay $200 just for a shirt. So I bought like this, like four packets of really cheap, shitty suits. And I started taking people out for coffee. You know, I didn't even, I didn't even know who I was meeting, but I was like, if I meet enough people, I'm going to grow the, the skills, the, the personal skills, I'm going to grow the confidence, I'm going to grow all of this other qualitative stuff that isn't, isn't, you know, on paper. Mm. And, um, you know, cause I was, I wasn't, I wasn't as confident up until then. So then I did that and I started applying for these jobs that I wanted and I applied 37 times for the, for the same job. And I was going to the same recruiter because I could see their name. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I want this. I want this, you know, and, and if I, if I, uh, and people were saying, but what the recruiter think you're desperate or like, you know, all these like negative things. Right. And those are probably true. You know, maybe they're like, aren't you annoying them? Aren't you annoying this guy who keep asking to take out for coffee? Aren't you annoying this person? Aren't you annoying this? Aren't you annoying that? And um, I, I was, I just chose not to believe that. I was mm-hmm. like, I choose to believe that um, by taking this action, I'm growing a little bit taller, getting a little bit closer. And from that meeting, like I spent like a thousand dollars taking people out to coffee. And that's, that's, that's a lot of money for a poor university student. Right. Mm. And I, um, and I chose to believe like, just by going to this meeting, because I knew, well, what I found out was everyone that I was going on meetings with, they all worked on the same floor. Mm. I was like, at some point, someone's going to say, Hey, did you meet that guy as well? Was he impressive? Like, you know, like some, something, some miracle will happen. And then it's it, you know? So, um, I, in that whole time I did like six interviews and I got really good at interviews. Um, I was also coaching, um, and men- mentoring students on how to interview because I thought I'm really good at this right now. Cause I was doing so many, mm. where I teach others how to do it. And I could, I could almost read, I got to a point where I could almost read an interviewer's mind and, and I knew how to direct and lead the conversation before they would ask me what my grades are. So I went through six, seven interviews without any of them asking me what my grade is which is, which is unheard of. Right. Yeah. So, but that was, I was like, I was so, <laughs> I was so, I was in survival. It was like, if they ask me what my grade is, this is over. So I need to mm-hmm. stay sharp. Right. So I was in there like a laser yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't study. And, um, and then, uh, and then I got in, you know, I got in, I got the phone call and he said, Oh, Hey Max, it's John here. I, um, you know, I want to offer you the position and um and i was like cool he said oh you know the um the salaries between here and here i was like yeah i'll take the top i'll take the, t- the top number <laughs> he's like yeah you know when do you start i said you know and then and then i started and then i sat back and i was like wow it worked <laughs> yeah, it worked but it was like nine months of like just yeah. interviews interviews and i was like any any company any company that i wanted that that was out of my reach I was like I want to go for it because I don't know what's gonna happen and then so so that working really taught me that um that you can basically you know push through and break through anything yeah that's a very I don't know I don't know that's true but it taught me how to believe it's it's true when it's useful to me yeah 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 so number one, there's inspiration from, from this guy you were talking to at that point who sort of gave you this idea about hustling and how it can be to your advantage given your, situ- given your situation. Yeah. But the other thing that I hear that's very powerful is the action part. It sounds like you were always in action. Yeah. Trying this and that, doing something, never stopping. And I think that's the difference between someone who really wants something badly and yeah. someone who's a bit like, oh, maybe, but not yet ready to give it like the best. Let me put it that way. Yeah, that, that's all it is. So, you know, because I would be interviewing people um, who, not interviewing, but mentoring, coaching university, like first year university students. And they would say, oh, I really want this. I said, okay, we well, got to do this, this, and this. And they won't do it. 
And that really frustrated me. I thought, yeah. why, why is this happening? You know, I'm putting so much energy and passion to talk to this person. Yeah. Uh, but then, and then I quickly learned like, yeah, like what people say and what people do are two different things. Mm. Yeah. So for the audience and for someone who is listening or watching this, what advice do you have again, like to really break through whatever it is that we feel is holding us back? What's like your top thing that you do? I don't think I use any tactics or or anything like that mm -hmm. um, besides just being, you know, really, really honest with myself. So if I'm talking to someone and they say that, uh, like, I, I, okay, I'll perfect example. So I have a friend, she um, has been talking about moving overseas to live forever, but she's scared. Mm -hmm. you know, like very very typical because like, oh but i've got a job here whatever like all these all these you know she could write a book on excuses of why not to leave but she's only got the one on the other side which is i want to mm -hmm. and and at first i was i was helping her through the logic i was like oh well you could do this you could like you could do all these tactical things just to, to you could ask your your employer to hold your job you know mm -hmm. a lot of them say yes because um you could tell them the time frame like just there's an answer for everything But, but she won't hear it right yeah. so then i got to the point where i said look this is the this is the the truth and the reality <laughs> i said i think i said close your eyes you know close your eyes and i want you to imagine um you know you're about to die like you're on your deathbed and you've already lived your life what are you going to regret more or what are you going to be less happy about the fact that you did go and maybe you didn't have a job to come back to uh maybe you didn't have the same job to come back to or like what excuses are you going to make them mm. you know? and then and then she was like yeah i know okay so yeah you're right you're right you're right, you're right. i'm just scared mm. and i said yeah and i said you know at some point um you know when you're about to die you won't what did i say i said you won't Like I said, are you, I, I said something like, this is really brutal. I said something like, are you going to be proud that you were scared and that made you stay? Or are you going to be proud that you're scared and you went scared? Like, which memory do you want to have? Because yeah. <clears throat> you're making that memory right now. And uh, she still hasn't gone yet. Um, she's got more excuses now. She, you know, she went and bought a house. So, you know. It's like resistance. It's like, oh, I'm going to buy this anchor so that I've got a really good excuse when, when I talk to Max next. You know, yeah. that's a bit yeah. what it's like. <laughs> yeah, so it's about being brutally honest with yourself about what is holding you back, then jumping into action, you know, just seeing opportunity wherever you go. And where do you get your energy from? Are there days when you're exhausted and then you need to recharge? Um, do I seem like I have a lot of energy? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, where do I get my energy from? Yeah, you know, the days when, you know, I'm going to sleep early, I'm, I'm um, you know, drinking more, eating more crap food or whatever, I'm um, usually there's there's a misalignment mm. okay, the misalignment is I mean they're doing something I don't want to do I'm spending too much time with someone that, that I don't want to spend time with mm. uh I've agreed to something I don't want to yeah yeah you know just like something has uh knocked me out of out of alignment because you know when you're in alignment like like when I was learning how to be an online marketing consultant uh and and i'm still doing that now but i'll give you that example i was i was working from 6 a.m until midnight and i look at the clock and i'd be like oh shit it's midnight i need to sleep but i didn't want to sleep mm -hmm. you know and and i said to myself uh but i need to sleep so i can keep working you know so i was using sleep as a tool to work more because that's what i really wanted mm. and that's what's happening now 
you know, I'm like massively in alignment now where um, I get sad when it's the weekend. You know, I get sad when it's the weekend, but then I remember, and I can't wait for Monday, but then I remember, oh, wait, I'm an entrepreneur. I can work whenever I want. It's like, well, I work on the weekend, you know? And then um, I am, you know, I go to bed. I'm like, I have to go to bed. So I get up early so I can work again, you know? So, and that doesn't happen without alignment. So I, I'd say alignment. Yeah. Yeah. So you make sure the people you interact with, the environment you choose, whatever you do, it's in line with who you really are and what you want to do. Yeah. And, you know, it might, always, it might not always be career driven, you know, sometimes people like their most happiest, their most aligned rock climbing or playing tennis yeah. or whatever. So like, and if you're not doing what fills your cup, then, um, you know, you're going to be angry, bitter, burnt out mm. and a lot of pain like me when I was in banking. Yeah. So fill your life with experiences you love and that give you good energy also. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes like some people get a lot of energy from doing nothing. So do more nothing, you know, or yeah. like, or watch a movie or read a book, like whatever, you know, if you're, it's funny that you say that it feels like, it feels like I have a lot of energy because I feel normal and I feel down when I'm less than this. So, you know, if you're not feeling like, like you're on fire and, and that doesn't feel normal to you, then you're out of alignment mm -hmm. yeah somewhere so check where that misalignment is and correct it yeah 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 well i think that's a beautiful end for this conversation okay cool <laughs> thank you so much max for making time yes my pleasure um uh, what can i say follow me on instagram and if you want to ask any questions and we can talk then. <laughs> yes, so follow Max on Instagram. Reach yeah. out to him. He will definitely be an energizer for you. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.